Hey guys, Sandy here. Welcome back to the channel. I am super, super excited to be playing with some gel press products today. So I have some printing plates in different uh, shapes here. I also have a brand new brayer, which is exciting. I can't wait to get that dirty. I have some texture combs, which gives you different textures. I also have an impressible, which is really awesome. Um, I can't wait to do things with this. And then this is also a Bible journaling uh, gel. Uh, press thing. Now you don't have to use these for Bible journaling. There are great shapes and I'm going to play with these too. I've also decided to pull out some glazes. So I have velveteen glazes, um, chroma glazes, all the glazes. Now I've done gel press before with paint and things like that, but I want to see how it works with this. So let's see what I can do. All right guys, so I'm using the 12 by 12 gel press kind of gel plate thing here. I'm taking some velveteen glaze and I'm just putting it all over the gel. I'm using the roller to go ahead and roll it all in. I am okay with it mixing. I'm okay with it not mixing. I just kind of see want to see what I can do. Now of course most of this turns purple because red and blue and pink together make purple. So I'm going to press a sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock down and then you can see that I get a print. Now this is just a background print. There's nothing that I'm doing to this print to make it special in any way. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off most of the velveteen glazes there so that I have a good gel print again. I'm going to roll my roller off on some paper towel and now I'm going to be bringing in some more glazes. So I'm using a mixture of chroma glazes and velveteen glazes. This is a sparkle chroma glaze. I was trying to get a stripey thing going on here and then I just decide you know what we're just going to leave it like this. Again, I'm rolling off my brayer, and then I'm going to do some twirly little lines here, um, and then I'm going to pull a print uh, again. So I pull a print. Spoiler alert, I actually don't use this print uh, on my layout. Um, I'm kind of in love with it, though, and it's still sitting on my desk, so I cannot wait uh, to do a layout with it. I just... I didn't want to cover it up. Sometimes you create a background and you just don't want to cover it up. Now this kind of thing is very addictive to me. I could sit here and play with these uh, jelly plates, gel press plates, like all the time. This one is also one that I created a background for and did not use. Um, but you know, sometimes you just get to creating and you end up making extra backgrounds. So they are there for you, uh, in the future. Now this one, I'm just using, uh, some yellow with, and I'm doing it on black. And then I'm also going to go ahead and uh, do it on some white cardstock. And I'm just pressing it down. Now this is a really cool, uh, gel press. Uh, plate thing. I don't know. I don't know what to call them besides gel gel press. They're like gel press jelly plates. So anyway, this is really cool because it's actually a uh, like an embossed plate. Now I am going to take these small little guys and I'm going to use some uh, neon glazes on them and I'm going to try it out on black cardstock. Now some of the stuff that I try out doesn't really work. It doesn't leave any color. It just kind of leaves like this uh, kind of like ghosting impression on black cardstock which is cool um, but you're never going to know what the gel press can do unless you play with it. And you don't have to use velveteen or chroma glazes on it. You could use paint. Um, in this case I'm using Distress Oxide and I'm just pressing it down onto uh, the gel plate. And then I decide to pull in some stencils to see if I can pull some more decorative bits. And I do. 
And it's pretty exciting that I um, am able to do this. So you just put the stencil on top of the gel press plate here, and then you uh, press your cardstock down, and then you're going to get the decoration of it uh, without the stencil. So it's pretty cool. Now here is one of the backgrounds. I just loved it. Um, but then I decided, you know what, I am going to use this kind of teardrop shape and I'm going to jelly press, gel press plate. I don't, what is the verb of this? I'm gel printing? I don't know. What's the verb? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use my palette knife and put some more of the what are these velveteen glazes and chroma glazes down on and I am just going to uh, use this as kind of a stripey bit so I'm going to pull a print and then I'm going to press more of the uh, mediums on here and then I'm just going to overlap as I'm pressing and I'm just going to keep pressing and basically what I'm doing is just creating um, a pretty fun background here so again, I'm just combining the colors, the blue, the red, the pink, and the purple, and I'm just going to keep pulling it down and pressing it until I get a good amount of ink all over um, my piece of paper. Now, I am not cleaning my palette knife in between going into the glazes, you guys. So if that's making you cringe, I'm so sorry, but sometimes I just get in the moment and I like being in the mess and I like having the fun. And if you could see my room right now, you would realize how much sometimes the mess happens. So now I'm going to go ahead and use those little texture things again. And then this is where I try it on the black cardstock and it really doesn't do anything but leave basically like a ghost image on the black cardstock. I don't get any kind of color laying down on the cardstock, which, you know, it's fine. Um, but it's just, you know, I just now I know how it's going to react. And you're never going to know how your medium is going to react with your cardstock unless you try it. So go ahead and try it. Try all the things. Make the mess. Make make the mistakes. And it's not really a mistake either, you guys. It's just to know in the future that like that's not going to do something. Now, this is also one that I pressed into uh, um, into the, the gel press plates here, and I did not use it. Um, but I love the way it turned out. And I, I, it's one of those times where you have a background and you're like, dang, I need to do something cool with that. And you don't know what to do with it. So basically, I'm just showing you all the different uh, ways and fun things that you can do. So now I am going to kind of use a gel uh, print on top of a jelly, like a gel press plate on top of a gel press plate. And what that is going to do is give me like a little bit of some resist here. So I'm just taking prints of the different shapes and the different colors because I do plan on fussy cutting those out. Now the good thing about gel press jelly plates is like it's not going to, um, it's not going to be a whole heck of a lot of cleanup. So I will tell you that after I did all of this stuff, I did go out and cleaned all of the gel press plates. Um, only thing I did was go out to my sink and clean them all off with some mild soap and water. And then I let them uh, dry on my counter. Uh, and then I put them back into their plastic packaging once they were completely dry. So now I'm going to make uh, two different, basically two different five petal flowers using this teardrop shape. So I'm using the Distress Oxide and I'm just going to go ahead and um, just keep popping down the oxide, uh, brayering it so that it kind of gets uh, a nice solid uh, color. And then I'm going to uh, go ahead and keep popping those down on my cardstock. So basically I have five blue petals and five purple petals. Now I will say that I was going to 
get into uh, doing some greens and yellows and oranges. But honestly, guys, the pink, purples, reds, and blues made me much happier in the moment playing with them. So I am just going to do a lot of playing with them in that way. Now I am using the black velveteen glaze here and I'm just going to go ahead and pull a print for each of these little kind of chevron shapes. And now I've got everything uh, down. So as you can see over here on the right hand side that's kind of sitting on the screen, that is that rectangle gel press plate that I just kept pulling prints from. Um, so I am going to go ahead and fussy cut everything out. Um, there were times where I did not make you watch me fussy cut everything. Now this is the more full, uh, the 12 by 12 gel press kind of uh, background that I made. And I decided to go ahead and tear around the edges. And that's going to give me a really cool white torn edge look. And then I decided to take a white pen and just kind of loosely follow and do some sketchy lines over top of it. So I really want this to feel mixed media. Like I want this to feel art journal-esque. Like that's what I want. Now, as you can see, all of the little heart and flower prints that I pulled with my little shaped gel press plates um, are there. As you can see, you don't really get to see a lot of the gel printing here on this black cardstock. Uh, so I do end up tearing it down and making it into a photo mat. I'm going to continue that torn edge feel. Um, these are those rectangle prints that I pulled. Um, the blueprint has the hearts on them and I'm just going to outline those with my white pen to give them a little bit more definition. And I'm going to overlap them so that I have a shelf for my photo to sit on. Now, you guys, this is sped up big time uh, because I am creating two different layouts in this video. Um, I figured this was a decent uh, speed. It's, it's fast, but it's not like ridiculously fast. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and put down those fussy cut hearts here by my Disney trash can. And then I'm going to cut out a couple of those chevrons uh, that I had pulled with the chevron shape. I'm just trying to figure out how I want that to go. I was wondering if I should have the chevrons pointing down and overlapping with some flowers. It's just a matter of figuring out what the heck makes sense for this layout. Now this is one of those uh, gel press plates for the flowers and I'm going to go ahead and add that onto my layout and what that's going to do is give me a little pop of this pink and it's going to pull out the pink in two places. One, the background of my layout here where I had that full 12 by 12 gel press print um, and then it's also going to pull out the pink shelf at the bottom of the page. So I go ahead and pull some Brutus Monroe sequins out. Now, if you're lucky um, and it's still going on when this video goes up, uh, sequins are marked down at a big discount on the Brutus Monroe site. So go check that out. Now, I am going to pull a couple of letter stickers from my stash. And of course, I'm talking about a Disney trash can, you guys. If you did not know, I do have uh, an entire album, actually two now, of Disney trash cans. So Disney trash cans are my thing. I think they're the coolest thing ever, and I take pictures of them whenever I go. Um, now, this Disney trash can in this particular photo was taken during COVID. I guess we're still in COVID, right? Um, and they were... Um, the little push handles for the trash cans were all propped open. Um, I guess that was keeping you from touching it um, and spreading germs. So there is that. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these sequins down on the page. And I am going to have them in a diagonal line. Um, it's going to go from the lower left-hand corner all the way up to the upper right-hand corner. And what that's going to do is keep your line of sight so that you see this diagonal embellishment line. And then I decide, you know what, that's not enough. I love the diagonal sequins and I need more because sometimes, guys, more is more. So I take some liquid glue and I'm going to place that down at the bottom and then I just dump the sequins down on top of that shelf. And what that is going to do, 
give me a great, great solid base for my sequins. Now here is another one of those layouts. You can kind of see where the prints uh, were pulled with the gel press plate in that black cardstock there. Again, not any color, just a little bit of ghosting. Now here is that uh, background that I made with the rectangles and uh, having them both directions, both vertically and horizontally, and just building up color on top of it. So again, another blue, pink, purple layout, but guys, that's what I was drawn to in the moment, so that's what I'm gonna do. I will say, if you want to try out a gel press and you want to try out colors, use colors you're drawn to. Don't, don't use colors and you know mix colors just because you see videos of them being done or you've seen a tutorial of it being done that way. Guys, what you need to do is grab the colors that you are drawn to. Grab the colors that are speaking to your soul. Grab the colors that you are just like, yes, these are gorgeous. Because then you're gonna have more fun and you're probably gonna like your results a little bit more. So now I have fussy cut out the teardrops, which are going to be uh, flower petals, and I'm just taking a black pen and outlining them. And what that's gonna do is just give them a little bit of definition. So I also have this uh, flower uh, gel press plate, uh, print that I use. I'm really struggling with what to call these. Like, I feel like I'm calling them way too many words. Gel press print plate print. I don't know. But anyway, I do take that and I'm going to emboss it with icicle embossing powder. That is a nice clear embossing powder that's just going to give me that beautiful mirror like shining shimmering splendid. Now these photos are two photos of desserts in the French bakery at Epcot. Um, so yes, another Disney layout. Um, but if you guys have not seen my stack of Disney photos, holy moly, you guys, like there is a lot. So I flip the flower over and I'm going to alternate the petals and then I'm going to put that embossed flower in the center. Well, then I decide, whoa, 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 Sandy. I mean, whoa, that flower is huge, bigger than I expected. So I cut it in half. Um, and then I'm going to tuck it underneath of the photos here. And then I'm also going to add the other half of that flower onto the page as well. Now here are those Velveteen Glaze uh, gel press prints uh, that I made and fussy cut out. And then I'm going to pop them up uh, with some foam to give it a little bit of dimension. So I have to pull the flower off because I decide that I actually don't want it um, coming up out of the photo. I want it off of the top of the page because I am going to bring in the rest of the floral down here at the bottom. So basically my uh, photos are kind of, you know, hugged by these flowers. So here is that rectangle print that I pulled with the floral and using that little texture tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that underneath of my photos so that my photos have a little bit of a base. And plus I felt everything was getting a little bit too purpley. So that bright pop of pink is gonna break up uh, the purple space there. But you know, it can't be too purpley um, because I am bringing in these glitter letter stickers from my stash. I am gonna Frankenstein and X because I don't have any more Ys. So basically I just cut off uh, one of the sections of the X and that is going to leave me with a Y. I'm going to glue these thickers down and then um, it's just going to say bakery because this was at the bakery at France. And I'm sure there's a name of the bakery, but honestly right now it's it's like escaped my mind and we just call it the Little French Bakery. Um, you will find if you watch enough of the videos that I put out that I call a lot of things, things whatever the heck I wanna call them and not their proper names. I do add some journaling with a white pen, uh, a couple of letter stickers or phrase stickers rather, and then that is going to do it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for checking out this fun collab between Gel Press and Brutus Monroe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. 
If you have any comments, drop them down there too. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Let me know if you have ever played with a gel press. Um, some of the products that I used will be linked down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again real soon for another video.